you know, the, the, the thing about this room, a, a science lab, it, it can welcome hip hop if educators chose to allow it to. Because, you know, people talk all the time about culturally relevant pedagogy, culturally responsive pedagogy, but if we look more broadly at the intersections of the culture of people of color, it's hip hop. So, I mean, yeah, here we are at, in, you know, at Marie Curie High School in the Bronx. To me, the fact that you have a graph piece as the, the entryway into the school, it just speaks to the fact that, you know, we're welcoming who you are. Um, and so they see themselves when they walk in every day. They see their culture represented when they walk in every day. And then you go in, and in the classroom where the teachers are working on this hip-hop based approach to science, you know, we're hoping great things happen. Bottom line is, if you don't bring in youth culture into the classroom, you exist in a space where you're only putting in an established culture. Um, and an established culture necessarily alienates somewhat. Um, and the thing about science in particular is that historically it's been known as a discipline that is very Eurocentric and is completely divorced from the ways of knowing and being of a diverse amount of folks. Any group that doesn't see themselves as part of the history of science becomes removed from it. And if we don't embrace the culture of the youth in front of us, then we're saying we don't want you to be successful academically. I mean, we, we might as well just say that. And so culturally responsive pedagogy um, in the new millennium embraces hip-hop culture. And usually in education, people rest at hip-hop as rap. Um, and in my work, I really explore all the components of hip-hop. So hip-hop as dress, hip-hop as movement, hip-hop as graffiti, hip-hop as art, and hip-hop as pedagogy. The hip-hop culture, and as you can see, I am not from the hip-hop culture. I had to embrace it in order to move the agenda for kids. If we want here to be a home for kids, we have to know how to grab them. And one way is to accept them as they are. How do we address this um, with our students? I mean, the first thing I oftentimes do in the classroom is I begin the classroom by taking pictures that are inherently hip hop and deconstructing them scientifically. Pound. That's real gangster. Um, so I'll take like, you know, a picture of 50, you know, with his chain hanging and say, you know, let's, let's talk about the links in this chain and, and what this chain is made of. You know, is it really platinum? Are there alloys? And they're like, what? Like, this isn't science. And I'm like, dude, it definitely is science, right? We said that last time, we just love the way he came about trying to teach you science. Like, he came about it in a good way, not like just bashing you in the head with a bunch of information. He tried to teach you in a fun way so that you would actually understand. Uh, the second thing is the use of the cipher. Um, the cipher are these modes of communication in hip hop where rappers stand together in a circle and exchange ideas. And when I teach science, I create ciphers in the classroom. So have you sit in a circle like they were in a cipher. If we create an opportunity where there's some hybridity, where there's a merging of culture, then new things are birthed. But learning from what he did with us um, being, even though we are all from different, I would say we're all different um, ethnicities, there is still that one culture. Everyone, everything that's different, is to be appreciated. So diverse cultures are important and I think hip hop speaks a lot to that. Science educators talk all the time about argumentation. So argumentation in hip hop lends itself to the art of the rap battle. So get your facts straight. We rap renegades, renegades from BK. Get your the we're not rap battles about, you know, who's the best rapper. We're rap battles about who's the best scientist. I'm so Galileo with it when I spit it. I'm so Washington Carver with it. It's the physicist slash lyricist. I already got to remember like playing the music in the classroom. Yeah. Like, even though it's not physical, it's like symbolically. If I have to hear the same sounds that I hear outside, it sort of makes science seem like it's a little bit more connected. So that, that's why I did it. Now you know, secret is revealed. You know? <laughs> it definitely made everybody more comfortable though. Yeah. It's really a focus on getting urban youth who have traditionally not been able to be successful in these disciplines to finally feel like 
I can wear a lab coat, and I can rhyme, and I can dance, and I can do graffiti, and all of that is all mixed together into who I am. But I don't have to extract who I am from being academically successful. I think that's the beauty of the world.